series. We defined the technique quartet, we defined the three rules for ear training, and you tried exercise A. Exercise A was like dipping your toe in the water to see if it's too cold or too hot. And today we're going to do exercises B, C, and D, which is going to be like jumping head first off of a cliff into the water. But Truth be told, exercise A may have struck you as a little more difficult than you thought it was going to be. And that's okay. Assuming you recorded yourself, how did you do? Did you hear yourself? Hear yourself enough to know if you were on pitch or off pitch? And if you were off pitch in places, or even for the entire thing, never be discouraged. It's the first step is discovering that you were off pitch because then you can work to improve it. Believe me, I know. Many years ago, I played an entire hour-long concert for an audience of about 300 people completely off-key the entire time, and I never realized it. But someone in the audience had a phone and filmed me and posted a good chunk, about 15 to 20 minutes of what I had played, on YouTube, and I never knew it. A friend of mine alerted me and told me what was going on and I went and found it and watched and I was completely shocked. I was horrible. I was sharp the entire time. I contacted the person, luckily, that had posted it and since it had been posted without my permission or without even my knowledge, I asked if it could be, I asked nicely if it could be taken down and it was, but not soon enough because a number of people on one of the theremin forums had seen it and there was a thread started about oh boy was he off key I had to respond and what did I say I said no excuses I was off key the entire time I was totally sharp and I was never able to explain how that happened but from that point on when I practiced I always recorded myself because I was committed to hearing what I was playing the same way I would hear it as if I were just listening to myself play without playing it. And it began to work. This is what you can do for yourself. Now we're going to do exercises B, C, and D. Exercise B is based on precisely the same thing we were doing before, sliding into notes. But let me give you this painfully obvious fact. Many of you, when you got your theorem and you put it together and you started trying to play. And it's fun. It's just plain fun. But here is a painfully obvious concept which I need to tell you about because it is the basis of ear training. And that concept is anywhere you hold your hand still is a musical note. Put my hand down here and pick a choice at, pick a choice at random. That's a musical note. Another one at random just happens to be an octave higher, same note but an octave higher, almost the same note, there we go, anywhere you hold your hand still is a musical note. Keep that in the back of your mind as you do these exercises, okay? Anywhere I hold my hand still is a musical note. Make sure you always hold your hand still long enough to hear the note you're trying for. All right, exercise B, same exact exercise except now we're going to play a song that about 99.99999 percent of you all know it is the birthday song we're only going to play the first six notes da 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 six notes that's all we're going to do you slide into each note hold it and move on to the next so i'm going to choose us a random pitch and we'll start there. You can match me and follow along, or match me and listen, but eventually you'll see what happens here. Okay, here we go. Choose a pitch at random. There we go. That's my going to be my starting note. that the 
next to the last note was sharp, but I corrected for it. This can happen. Most beginning theremists, if you've been playing a day, a few weeks, even a few months, remember this second principle. Keep it in the back of your head. The pitches are usually closer together than you think. And many theremists, including myself, as you just saw, overshoot the location of the note. And when you do that, just correct back and get that note and hold it till you're sure you've got the right note. All right, now it's time for you to do this on your own. Okay, I'm going to give you a starting pitch. Match that pitch, please. Now, pause the video and practice the birthday song, just the first six notes, five times in a row. You can try it at different speeds. You can try it slow, you can try it fast, but always slide into the note. five times. Practice. Go ahead. And we're back. Exercise C. Exercise C is precisely the same thing. But remember, anywhere you lift up your hand while it's staying still is going to be a musical note. So this time we're going to do it five times with a random starting note. You'll do this five times, but I'll demonstrate just very quickly. I put my hand over the volume loop so it makes no sound. And I lift up anywhere at random. That's where my first note's going to be. So I play it. Never worry about your volume hand at this point. Slide in. Now the next time I do it, I put my hand down, place my hand anywhere, that's my starting note. Alright, pause, practice five times each time starting on a random note. Pause the video five times through first six notes of the birthday song. Go! And we're back again. Now for the last one, exercise D. We're going to build from the first two things, but we're not going to use these long slides anymore. The reason we do to begin with is so that your body has a chance to adjust your ears have a chance to hear as you reach that pitch and can stop at the correct time. Now we're going to use a technique which you would probably rarely use when you're playing a song, but for learning and pitch training, it's great because it begins to verge on the idea of rhythm as well. And it's a hand technique I just call the push. Thumb and forefinger together, close your fist loosely. I'm going to show you what it looks like from the side. It just looks like this. That's it. It just looks like this. You're pushing with your knuckles. Very gently. Doesn't have to be like, like you're punching something. Just push. Now we're going to do the same thing with the birthday song, only this time I want you to try to approximate the rhythm using the push. Still, You'll still hear a slight slide, but use the push. It sounds like this. I choose a note at random. That's my starting note. Gotta get it. It takes a little getting used to, but eventually you can build it up to a, a quite faster speed. See? It's tenuous at first. Try again. Each time you do it, it's going to improve. So I want you to use the push. It's like this again. It's just a wrist action. Use the push. Practice five times each time on a random.
random note of your choice. So here it is. Five times. Pause it and then come on back. As you're sliding at your own speed, try it fast, try it slow. It's training your body, training your physical body to feel where those notes are. Next time, we're going to move on to exercise E for ear. Ha ha. E for ear, building on what we've just done. Now, your practice, as you practice these three exercises, when you do it on your own, practice the entire song as opposed to the first six notes. Every time you do it, the whole song, and you will eventually be surprised at your recording of just how much you improve over the course of just a few minutes. All right, next time, exercise E, I'll be here.